The Queen Mary II is the last of the great transatlantic liners and currently is the only passenger ship operating direct point-to-point -point crossings on the North Atlantic Ocean with a regular schedule. So she's pretty unique and because she was designed as an ocean liner there are a number of things about the ship that are a little bit different. So is this the reason why the Queen Mary II carries what looks to be a very fancy art installation on the forward decks of the ship? Well, sort of. The Queen Mary 2 isn't actually carrying any fancy artwork here. Instead, it's actually a number of the ship's spare propeller blades. And these are often, funnily, nicknamed the Captain's or Commodore's Cufflinks and actually act as a little bit of an interesting place to visit on the forward of Deck 7. But why are they carried here? Well, the Queen Mary 2, just like all modern passenger ships, is designed with propellers that are unique to that ship. Now, in Queen Mary 2's case, the propellers actually sit on the forward end of four gigantic podded propulsion motors. And these pods were designed by Alstom in collaboration with Rolls-Royce and were custom designed for Queen Mary 2. Now it's quite unusual for a ship of this standard and a particularly a modern passenger ship to have four massive pods. A Queen Mary 2's propulsion system is pretty special. The forward two pods are actually fixed and they provide the speed that the ship needs to undertake the direct transatlantic crossing, particularly when she first entered service and was expected to do it in six days. But the aft two can actually rotate 360 degrees and they provide maneuverability, acting as both a rudder but also essential when the ship's going in and out of port. They help with the maneuverability of the Queen Mary 2. And as you can see on the video on screen now, the Queen Mary 2 can turn on a dime. She's very, very maneuverable. Now this ship is massive and it has a very unique hull and so the propeller system was designed specifically for Queen Mary 2. And this is the case with most modern cruise ships. The propeller systems are designed specifically for the ship that you've got in question. Queen Mary 2, of course, as a ship that was designed to undertake the transatlantic crossing, is going to spend quite a lot of time away from her home port. She's not going to be in Southampton in the UK uh, every day of the week. She's not going to be returning there very quickly because she's going to spend a lot of time in America and also the ship was designed as a dual purpose liner with world cruising in mind. So with this being the case, it actually makes a lot of sense to carry the spare propeller blades on board the Queen Mary 2 so that they're with the ship if they ever need them. So you might be wondering, if something went wrong with the propellers, can you not just go to the propeller aisle in Walmart and buy yourself a replacement? Well, that's a bit of a silly example, but no, you can't. There is not really any such thing as a standard propeller for modern day cruise ships. Uh, and in fact, each ship is designed with propellers for its own specific hull and specifications. Now, because of this, the shipyards and the propeller manufacturers will quite often produce spares for the ship. In Queen Mary 2's case, of course, they're carried on board. Now, the reason that this is important is for two main purposes. Firstly, to reduce the vibrations that the propellers cause in the aft end of the ship particularly, and secondly, for cavitation. Now, vibration is something that you do notice on passenger ships, and in fact, on some ships it could be quite noticeable. The QE2, which was Queen Mary 2's predecessor, an absolute favourite of mine, she had a propulsion system that was very, very powerful, and actually, when she would go at fast speeds, if you were standing on the aft decks of the ships, you could definitely feel vibrations from those propellers. Queen Mary 2, you don't really feel any vibration on the aft of the ship, and that's thanks in part to the fact that there's been a lot of advances in propeller technology design, and also the potted propulsion system is specifically created to reduce the vibrations on board that ship. Cavitation is the process by which water vaporizes to form bubbles on the propeller blades when they spin due to the pressure dropping below the water's vapor pressure. These vapor bubbles eventually implode when they travel into an area of high pressure. Cavitation makes these vibrations much worse. Cavitation can also cause damage to the propeller blades themselves, further increasing the level of vibrations. So to reduce the likelihood of vibrations and cavitation, propellers are custom designed for the hull and shape of each particular ship, meaning that you can't just put any old spares onto a ship when a replacement propeller is needed. Now, this can also require ships to have alterations made during their service career. When ships are changed, such as lengthening, or when they have new propulsion systems put into them, they do sometimes require new propeller systems.
Queen Elizabeth II, for example, was given a massive refurbishment in 1986-1987 where her steam propulsion system was replaced by a diesel electric plant, and this saw her six-bladed original propellers replaced with five-bladed variable pitch propellers, which were custom designed to work with the new power plant. And although they did improve Queen Elizabeth II's characteristics and handling, they were actually partly responsible for those vibrations that you would feel at the stern of the ship. We also have seen a number of ships throughout history that have been plagued by vibrations and propeller issues. A very famous example is the 1907 built Lusitania and Mauritania for the Cunard line, which when they first entered service, vibrated horrendously towards the stern, resulting in them having to go back to their shipyards and have new propellers fitted. And they were often tweaking the propeller designs of these ships throughout their service careers. So now we know that a ship requires uniquely designed propellers for its specific characteristics. And as a result of this, when a ship is built, the shipyard and the manufacturer will generally build a series of spares that the ship can keep. On Queen Mary 2's case, these are kept on board the ship. For many ships, they are actually kept in warehouses on shore, especially cruise ships that are expected to go back to their home port on regular occasions. But the Queen Mary 2 is not the only ship to carry the spare propeller blades on the bow. In fact, other examples include the Norwegian Sun and the Norwegian Sky, as well as the Carnival Luminosa and the Carnival Deliciosa. But if you can think of a ship that also carries its propeller blades on the bow, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know what your experiences are with these fantastic structures. On board Queen Mary 2, you can walk right up to the propeller blades and in fact this space at the front of deck 7, right on the bow there, is a wonderful space to go to watch not just the world go by but also to see the night sky when Queen Mary 2 is sailing in the North Atlantic. You get a beautiful view of the sky with the propeller blades offering some shelter from the wind and the weather. So I hope you found this little explainer interesting, and next time you're on board Queen Mary 2 or see the Queen Mary 2, you might be able to appreciate this fantastic art installation a little bit more, the Captain's or Commodore's cufflinks. Thanks so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe, and check out my back catalogue for heaps of other maritime history videos. A huge thank you as always to our channel members. Your support is what helps make these videos possible. You can join the crew and become a channel member by clicking the link in the description below. We'd love to have you on board. If you're interested in more maritime history, don't forget to check out my Substack, at The Maritime Historian, where I go into all sorts of detail on maritime history topics. And until next time, I hope to see you on board. This video was brought to you by me and my new book, The Evolution of the Passenger Ship. In the evolution of the passenger ship, we bring years of research together to create a book that takes you on a journey from the dawn of passenger shipping right the way through to the modern cruise behemoths that we see today. The evolution of the passenger ship is available at all good bookshops, and if you purchase a copy, you help us, which helps support the channel.